In Memoria Aditum SCP-4197 Tentacle Surgeon SCP-4197 is a 32-year-old adult humanoid female named Dr. Sarah Veers, an acclaimed surgeon and known practitioner of cytomancy, a branch of thaumaturgy that deals primarily with the manipulation, creation, and alteration of cells, specifically those found in members of the Animalia Kingdom. Examination revealed that SCP-4197's torso is occupied only by its heart and a partial respiratory system, with the rest of the abdomen being entirely hollow. This space stores four prehensile appendages when said appendages are not in use. According to SCP-4197, this condition predates its knowledge of the cytomatic arts, a fact corroborated by photographs taken from its family home. SCP-4197 is to be contained within a standard humanoid containment cell. Discovery SCP-4197 came to the Foundation's attention after a news outlet reported that an American surgeon removed several brain tumors from a 12-year-old boy in Botswana, with the child making a full recovery in less than two days. SCP-4197 was apprehended the following week outside of Gaborone where it was dispensing mosquito netting and antimalarial drugs to the populace. SCP-4197 surrendered without a struggle and has cooperated with Foundation inquires, with some reluctance. According to its passport and journals, SCP-4197 had spent four years traveling through impoverished countries, where it performed an unknown number of surgeries, utilizing cytomancy to aid its procedures. The following tests were conducted to judge the extent of SCP-4197's capabilities. SCP-4197 was provided with standard medical equipment, as well as the necessary materials for cytomatic rituals. Subject, D24729 Condition present, severe tendon and ligament damage related to employment in the construction-slash-restoration sectors as a civilian. Procedure conducted. SCP-4197 placed its hand on D24729's forehead, causing him to become unconscious. It then removed a scalpel from the kit provided and made four incisions on the side of the knees and the interior of the elbow. SCP-4197 drew a sigil and oil paint around each site, which halted the flow of blood. Following this, SCP-4197 took several portions of bull sinew and inserted them into D-24,729's wounds. After drawing a larger sigil on D-24,729's chest, it began to suture the incisions. Outcome, D-24729 reported immediate relief from his chronic pain. End of test. The second test log reads. Subject, Dr. Richard Blanc. Condition present, spontaneous kidney failure and acute blood poisoning. Emergency procedure conducted due to Site-12's remoteness. Procedure conducted, SCP-4197 drew a sigil on Dr. Blank's ankle with an appendage, using its own blood, before creating a 1cm incision in the center of the sigil and placing a shallow basin beneath it. Black liquid began to seep out of the wound. After administering a blood transfusion via 4, SCP-4197 made two incisions above Dr. Blank's kidneys with a scalpel. SCP-4197 then used the scalpel to carve symbols associated with the Sarkic cults into the back of its hands, crying out in pain several times. After composing itself, SCP-4197 reached into Dr. Blank's torso and removed his kidneys with its bare hands. It then took the kidneys, which were blackened and showed severe scarring, and wrung them out over the basin. After two minutes, the kidneys were reinserted into Dr. Blanc and SCP-4197 sutured the wounds. Outcome, Dr. Richard Blanc experienced a full recovery, with no side effects. The basin used in the surgery was found to contain a black liquid comprised of toxins usually filtered by the kidneys. SCP-4197 exhibited symptoms consistent with severe sleep deprivation and slept for the next three days.
We then find a transcript of an interview with SCP-4197. The following interview was conducted immediately after SCP-4197 recovered from its surgery on Dr. Richard Blanc. SCP-4197 said, I'm doing pretty well, Dr. Turner. Dr. Turner asked, I assume you're at least well rested. SCP-4197 replied, You don't need to small talk me. I know what you're gonna ask, so go for it. Dr. Turner asked, Your hands? That wasn't normal cytomancy. You carved a sarcic symbol into them. Are you? SCP-4197 interrupted, A flesh crafter. Yes. No. Not really. I can do Nalka rituals, but I'm not a practic. Why? Is that important or something? Dr. Turner responded, well. SCP-4197 apologized, sorry. I didn't mean to sound hostile. I'm just really hungry and my hands ache. Thanks for bandaging them, by the way. Dr. Turner said, it was the least we could do. Would you like me to call for some food? SCP-4197 replied, yeah. I'd like that. Interview halted for 30 minutes. Dr. Turner asked, better? SCP-4197 said, much better. Dr. Turner asked, so? Are you a carcist? SCP-4197 responded, I think you mean Orin or Zend. Carcists are the priest types. But in any official capacity, no. I'm not ordained or anything. Dr. Turner asked, then how did you learn your craft? SCP-4197 said, my craft is medicine. I'm a surgeon by trade. But I learned how to do cytomancy from a carcist, if that answers your question. Dr. Turner said, not really. The Veers family is rich, but there's no real connection to sarcasm. And you're too good to have learned recently. SCP-4197 said it, it was a family friend. She started teaching me when I was like six. Maybe she saw something in me. Or maybe it was. A wet sound can be heard, as well as the tearing of fabric. SCP-4197 said these. Dr. Tuner gulped and responded, and you've had those. SCP-4197 interrupted, since birth. You already found my baby pictures. Why keep asking? Dr. Turner explained because it. A wet sound is heard again. Dr. Turner sighed and said, never mind. Look, if a Carsus singled you out at a young age for training, why aren't you a practicing member? Or a member of her company? An advisor to her Holocaust? SCP-4197 replied, I am. A member of her company, that is. Kinda. Look, I know you have these blanket generalizations of what an Alka is, but we're not all monsters. Not all of us delight in murder or cannibalism. There are a lot of people like me, young Nalka, who want to do something to fix the world. We have this incredible power, the ability to reshape living matter, and we just squander it. Dr. Turner asked, how would you use it? SCP-4197 responded, like I've been using it. For the past four years, I've used the Veer's family fortune and my flesh crafting to make a positive difference in the world. Dr. Turner expressed concern, that's the issue. Your sarcic rituals put the world at risk of knowing about the supernatural, the anomalous, the paranormal. If you'd just used the fortune, nothing would have happened. SCP-4197 argued, no amount of money can pull a tumor out of somebody's heart with a 100% guarantee of survival. The first thing they tell you in medical school is that you are going to lose people. I know sarcasm is like the dark side of the force to you people, but if it means I can save lives, so be it. Dr. Turner stated, the morality of cytomancy isn't the concern of the foundation. It's the disruption of normalcy. SCP-4197 questioned, why do you get to be the arbiters of what's considered normal? Silence. SCP-4197 sighed and said, I'm never gonna leave here, am I? End log.
SCP-4197 declined further interviews and limited its interaction with staff to brief sentences. We then find another text log. It reads, Subject, Captain Tobias Bell. Condition present. Massive comminuted fractures in the legs and complete paralysis after the destruction of the spinal column between the C4 and L4 vertebrae in a vehicular collision. Procedure conducted. SCP-4197 engraved a seven-pointed star into the operating table, placing a single drop of axolotl blood in the center, before instructing attendants to place Captain Bell on the table. SCP-4197 then ran its fingernail across Captain Bell's thighs and calves, causing the skin and muscle to split and splay out. Over the next two hours, SCP-4197 reassembled the splinters of his femur, patella, tibia, and fibula with surgical tweezers, utilizing all of its appendages in this process. Once completed, SCP-4197 held the split muscle and skin together with its left thumb and forefinger licked its right thumb and ran it over the seam, sealing the wound. SCP-4197 repeated this process with Captain Bell's spinal column, taking additional measures to ensure the proper reconnection of nerves and blood vessels. Outcome Captain Tobias Bell was reinstated to active duty two weeks later. SCP-4197 entered a comatose state after the conclusion of the procedure and remained in that state for five days. End of test. Another interview was made by Dr. Turner. Its log reads, Dr. Marcus Turner stepped into the containment chamber of SCP-4197, a person with cytomancy abilities. The room was sterile and dimly lit, with the only sound being the hum of equipment. Morning, Marcus, SCP-4197 greeted him from their bed looking up from the book they were reading. We need to talk, Sarah, Dr. Turner said, pulling up a chair next to the bed. You're not allowed to call me that, are you? SCP-4197 asked, their expression turning somber. You're in crisis, Sarah. I'm allowed to do whatever I want, Dr. Turner replied firmly. I'm not in crisis, SCP-4197 protested but Dr. Turner could see the exhaustion etched on their face. You barely eat. You've stopped taking care of yourself. You only leave your bed when we bring you in for testing, he pointed out. Look, I have nothing to live for. Helping people. Try to save the world. That was my life's purpose. Can't really do that from this box. So no shit I'm depressed, SCP-4197 admitted with a heavy sigh. Dr. Turner nodded sympathetically. I understand that. But if you let me become the arbiter of morality and normalcy, I think I can change your mind. SCP-4197 raised an eyebrow. Ha. Huh. Good luck. Undeterred, Dr. Turner continued. Okay. I dislike cytomancy because it makes my skin crawl, no pun intended. But what you do with it is incredible. Our agents interviewed every single person you did surgery on. You changed so many lives. And saved a lot more. I know. I was there, SCP-4197 said softly, looking away. But you were downstream, trying to filter out toxic waste, Dr. Turner pointed out. You know Dr. Blanc. The man whose kidneys you repaired. He works out of Jonas Salk's old office, and he's been working on a one-and-done malaria vaccine for the past twenty years. Salk. You're damning with me, SCP-4197 said incredulously. Dr. Turner rustled some papers and produced a photograph of Jonas Salk in one of the Foundation's labs. Here's a picture of Jonas. Well damn, SCP-4197 said, taking the photo to look at it more closely but I don't understand. You're at the source now. If you want, you can keep the people who take on the greatest threats in the world safe and healthy. And I think that might just be better than helping the guys at the bottom, Dr. Turner explained. SCP-4197 considered this for a moment. Are you trying to sell me on a medical version of trickle-down economics? Dr. Turner chuckled. 
I would have never put it like that, but sure. Take Captain Bell, for example. Because of his actions, he's saved countless lives. You've given him back his ability to walk, Sarah. And play with his kids. But what about D2, what was it? SCP-4197 asked, their tone growing serious. D-24729 killed someone in a home robbery because he was addicted to opiates after a lifetime in working in disaster cleanups and restoration. When he gets out in 14 months, he can go back to doing that. Because of you, Dr. Turner said, his voice quiet. You're laying it on thick. Why should I trust you? Who's to say I won't use my powers to move all your organs to the outside? SCP-4197 said, half-joking. Well, as uncomfortable as that thought makes me, I trust you, Sarah. If you wanted to hurt somebody, you would have done it. And you probably wouldn't have spent your life doing anomalous charity, Dr. Turner said earnestly. I'm still a spooky flesh witch, Marcus, SCP-4197 said with a wry smile. You're a good-hearted, flesh witch, Sarah. Dr. Turner corrected himself with a grimace. God, I really hate that phrase. SCP-4197 chuckled. Yeah, it felt creepy to say. Dr. Turner leaned forward. Look, what I'm trying to say is that you should think of this as helping, on a much larger scale. Okay. I like that, SCP-4197 said thoughtfully. And I truly wish that it didn't have to be like this. If it was up to me, I'd let you go and give you the Foundation's support because I believe in your cause, Dr. Turner said, his voice tinged with regret. Thanks, Marcus, SCP-4197 said, looking at him with newfound gratitude. But, we don't always get what we want in life. Sometimes we get an awful hand. It's our job to make the best of it. Dr. Turner said, his tone firming. So, do you really want to save the world? He asked, looking at SCP-4197 expectantly. Hi, can I think about it? It's just so much, all at once, SCP-4197 said, looking down at their hands. Of course, Dr. Turner said, rising from his chair. Take all the time you need. End of log. Some time later a containment breach occurred. A number of armed personnel breached Site-20's perimeter and entered the main facility. Gunfire echoed down the hallway as four security personnel moved up to engage off-camera targets. A shot hit the lock of SCP-4197 cell, causing it to open slightly. Two of the personnel were downed, prompting Sergeant Johnson to order Private Flint to retreat. Damn. Flint. Pull back. Sergeant Johnson yelled as they began to back away. Unfortunately, before they could reach the bulkhead doors, both were downed. A five-man squad moved down the hallway past the personnel and exited the area. One minute passed before SCP-4197 pushed open the door and noticed the fallen soldiers. Oh Christ. It exclaimed before going back into its room and re-emerging with a Foundation-issue surgical kit and thaumaturgy pouch. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this, SCP-4197 muttered to itself as four appendages emerged from its back to take the kit and pouch from its hands. SCP-4197 crouched over one of the security personnel and began to operate on his injuries. Over the next ten minutes, it stabilized two more personnel before footsteps were heard. SCP-4197 quickly withdrew its appendages. Stand up. Back away from that body, an unknown assailant ordered as two armed men came into camera view, carrying a foundation crate between them. They set it down and pointed handguns at SCP-4197. What kind of freak are you? The other unknown assailant asked. I'm a doctor. Please. Just let me SCP-4197 was interrupted when unknown assailant one shot one of the guards in their head. You're coming with us, unknown assailant one declared. 
SCP-4197 back towards the door to its cell, pursued by the assailants. As it reached the door, two large appendages emerged from its back and wrapped around the waists and necks of the assailants. Lifting them off the ground, SCP-4197 threw them into the cell before closing the door. One of the appendages then reached up and bent the hinges of the door to render it inoperable. Clutching its chest, SCP-4197 muttered, I'm gonna. Gonna. It quickly regained its composure and checked on the downed security personnel. After making sure their vitals were within an acceptable range, it opened the empty cell next to its own with Sergeant Johnson's keycard and dragged the three surviving men inside before closing the door. There's gotta be more out there, SCP-4197 said as it grabbed the kit and pouch off the ground and moved in the direction the assailants originally came. End of log. Afterward, SCP-4197 is credited with directly saving the lives of 26 members of staff, as well as providing aid to numerous others during this breach. Lastly is an interview between SCP-4197 and DR Vigil, it reads. SCP-4197 asked Dr. Virgil about Dr. Turner's condition, to which the latter replied that he would be fine, mostly because of SCP-4197's help during the breach. SCP-4197 wondered if it had done something wrong when Dr. Virgil appeared to be on edge and not as trusting as Dr. Turner. Dr. Virgil checked SCP-4197's file and agreed with Dr. Turner that it had been helpful during the breach. When SCP-4197 asked for Dr. Virgil's honest opinion, the latter stated that it wasn't made for this life and that it hadn't mentally recovered from its first breach experience. Dr. Virgil explained that the Foundation was a battlefield, an endless war for the existence of humanity. However, Dr. Virgil needed SCP-4197 because people got hurt here a lot, and somebody like SCP-4197 could easily save hundreds of lives. SCP-4197 asked if everything would get better for it if it agreed, but Dr. Virgil replied that it wouldn't. People in the Foundation knew about SCP-4197's abnormalities, and there was a lot of bad blood between the Foundation and the Sarkic cults. Dr. Virgil told SCP-4197 that it was only getting a choice because of Director Ian, who must have caught its eye. SCP-4197 asked if it was in a good way, but Dr. Virgil replied with a rhetorical question. Suddenly, a loud popping sound was heard from outside the interview room, causing SCP-4197 to panic. Dr. Virgil assured SCP-4197 that it wasn't gunfire and asked if it would accept the offer. SCP-4197 replied that it didn't really have a choice, morally speaking. After the breach and what Dr. Virgil had told it, SCP-4197 realized that it couldn't sit on the sidelines while people died and that it had to do something. Dr. Virgil confirmed that it knew SCP-4197 would say that and asked if it was in or out. SCP-4197 replied with a simple yes. End of log. SCP-4197 began to assist in medical procedures rated as critical or where the patient was deemed to have a low chance of survival. Due to this integration, the mortality rate at Site-12 hit record lows and SCP-4197 is pending redesignation.